tier. Stand vertically with deviation equal or lesser than 1 in thousand of the cabinet height. Cabinet front space equal or greater than 800 mm. Space between cabinet and wall equal or greater than 100 mm. Space between cabinet and both walls equal or greater than 100 mm. Other devices stand closely with BS8800 with the front panels in the same line and enough space for the door. Drill holes Located holes according to the base installation template. Hole diameter 510. Depth 50 mm to 60 mm. Installed base. Installed expansion bolt. Place the insulation cover. Install guiding pin to position the cabinet. Finally, take the insulation test. The two test connectors of the multimeter should be connected with the metal part of the base and the two expansion bolts. The circuit should be disconnected. Fix the cabinet. Align the positioning hole on the back of the cabinet with the guiding pin in the installation components of the base. Push the cabinet until the angle support for the positioning is plugged into the slot on the back of the cabinet. Measure the vertical deviation of the cabinet. Make sure the deviation is less than 1 per thousand. Otherwise, add a gasket and the cabinet to make it level. Finally, take the insulation test. The two test connectors of the multimeter should be connected with the metal part of the base and the two expansion bolts. The circuit should be disconnected. Install BS8800RF module. Don't forget to wear anti-static bracelets before installation. Hold the bottom board with one hand and hold the handle with another hand to push the board along the horizontal rail. Install the RSU power connector. The monitoring cable of the fan rack is connected with the MON port of the first RF module on the left. Install the BBU power connector. Install the cable on SA panel. Fasten the B4 terminal of the cable on SA panel with the grounding terminal. Install power cable and protective grounding cable. The yellow and green is protective grounding cable. The blue cable is negative 48 voltage cable for power input, and the black one is negative 48 voltage power grounding cable.
都是超过两超上去，超了吗？超了，超了。效果。是的，是的，用超好的。现在，现在，现在。Install the yellow and green protected grounding cable to the PE binding post. The cables should be bound with an interval of 200 mm between each other. The cables should be bound with the other terminal of the protected grounding cable between each other. be connected with the indoor grounding bar. On one side of the distribution rack, the blue power cable is connected with the power input terminal. The black power grounding cable is connected with the power grounding terminal. Install E1 cable. There are two type of E1 cables including 75 ohm and 120 ohm, both of which use DB44 strained connector at one end. Connect the DB44 connector of E1 cable with the B1 port of the cable on SA panel. The connector of the 75 ohm E1 cable should be made on set. Install the back sleeve and fixing washer at a 75 ohm E1 terminal. Peel the cover of the cable for 5 mm with wire stripper or knife. Plug the metal core into the hole at the front sleeve of the terminal and fix it with cable clamp. Weld the metal part at the hole in front sleeve of the terminal and the metal part of the cable core firmly with electric iron and solder wire. The sequence of E1 cable depends on its series number. There are four pairs, including 1, 5, 2, 6, 37 48 in which number 1 2 3 4 are for input and number 5 6 7 8 are for output connect the other end of E1 cable with corresponding port on DDF rack if 120 ohm E1 cable is adopted the other end should be connected with DDF by way of the wire punch down. Every 10 pieces of 120 ohm E1 cables are bound together in one loop, which are blue red, blue black, pink red, pink black, green red, green black, orange red, orange black, green red, green black, from bottom up. Each cable in the first loop is marked with one red point, and each one in the second loop is marked with two red points, and so on. Plug in each cable into the slot according to the cable sequence. The blade of wire punch down tool should be placed in walls. Press the punch down post vertically until the click sound is heard. Install indoor fiber and SFP cable. Connect one LC connector of the fiber with TS or RX port on RSU. Connect the other LC connector 
of the fiber with TX or RX port on FS board. Connect the first selector with TX0 and RX0 on FS board, the second sector with TX1 and RX1, and so on. If one end of the fiber is connected with TX port on FS board, the other end should be connected with RX port on RSU, vice versa. If SFP cable is required on site, it should be installed in the following steps. Plug SFP high speed cable into the port of RSU optical module according to the direction and port number on the label of the SFP and the direction of optical module. The other end is connected with the port on FS module. The blue label of the optical module is downward. The SFP cable to RSU1 to RSU3 goes down through the left side of the cabinet. The SFP cable to RSU4 to RSU6 goes down through the right side, which should be fixed firmly. If there are three RSU modules, it's suggested to place all the cables together through the left or right side. Make jumper connector on top of the cabinet. Cut a piece of jumper of the 15mm long and peel the cover. Install the jumper cable on top. Install the DIN connector at one end of the feeder jumper to the ANT port of RSU. The DIN connector at the other end should be connected with DIN connector of the feeder. 